Have you ever noticed on seed packets they say how many days until harvest? From the day you plant something, can you actually predict when it will be ready to be harvested? And just how accurate is that prediction? The answer is yes. We can make fairly accurate predictions using something called growing degree days. Growing degree days, also known as heat or thermal units, are an index calculated using daily temperature data. When we calculate and add them up over a season, we can use them to predict when a crop or insect will reach maturity or a certain stage of development. This idea was formed in 1730 by a French scientist, René A. F. de Réaumur. Since then, growing degree days have been used to estimate the development of plants and insects. Each plant or insect species is sensitive to a specific temperature known as the base temperature. When the air temperature is above the base temperature for a certain length of time, the species will develop and grow. If the temperature dips below the base temperature, development stops or slows. Because there are variations in temperature throughout the growing season, like heat waves in the summer or cold snaps in the spring, calendar days are actually not the best method in predicting the timing of plant development. Instead, growing degree days assign a heat value to each day based on how much each day's temperature differs from the plant's base temperature. I mentioned that each day is assigned a heat unit, right? So we start at a reference date. If the average temperature of the day is one degree higher than the base temperature, then we have one growing degree day. Likewise, if the average temperature is two degrees above the base temperature, then we have two growing degree days. Because each plant or insect has a total heat requirement to reach different stages of growth, we look at accumulations of the growing degree days throughout the season. We typically see growing degree days increase in the growing season of spring and summer, then stay steady for the rest of the year. This can all be pretty confusing, so let's walk through an example. Let's go back to our seed packet and say we're growing sweet corn, which has a base temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's say our average temperature of the day is 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's subtract the base temperature from our average temperature. Here we have 12. So for this day, we have 12 growing degree days in Fahrenheit because the average temperature is 12 degrees higher than the base temperature for the sweet corn. Now let's say the next day's average temperature is 64. This would then give us 14 growing degree days in Fahrenheit. When we calculate accumulated growing degree days, we add day one plus day two, so there are 26 growing degree days in Fahrenheit for day two's accumulation. By the time we get to the end of the season, the accumulated growing degree days for sweet corn to reach maturity, or the black layer, is up to about 3,000 growing degree days in Fahrenheit. This is how growing degree days are accumulated over time. There are a few different ways to calculate growing degree days, but this is a common method. Now let's look at a longer term example with the U.S. National Phenology Network's online tool. This tool has many display options with different daily growing degree day accumulations, such as for the 30 year average, regular daily accumulations, and anomalies. First, let's look at the accumulated growing degree days for the U.S. with a base temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit for sweet corn. So what does this mean? Here, we're looking at growing degree days for a specific day accumulated from January 1st, 2019 to our selected day of August 15th, 2019. For this point in eastern North Carolina, we've accumulated over 3,500 growing degree days in Fahrenheit, which is past the growing degree day threshold for maturity. Corn is typically harvested in August or September, so this does make sense. If we click on Show Accumulation from the map, we can see a line graph of the growing degree day accumulation over time, along with how this compared to the previous year and the 30-year average. We can also set the growing degree day threshold for corn maturity, or about 3,000 growing degree days. Everything above this line on the plot means corn has likely reached maturity. We can see that corn reached maturity in July, and growing degree days were above normal throughout the season. We can also look at how far above or below normal growing degree days are. Displayed here is the accumulated growing degree day anomaly for August 15, 2019. 
In other words, it's showing the difference between August 15th, 2019's accumulated growing degree days and the 30-year average. With this, we can see how far above or below normal the growing degree day is. In this case, Greenville, North Carolina has 308 more growing degree days than normal, so they're above average for this time of year. These are similar results to the line graph, but just another way of looking at normals. We can also use growing degree days to determine growth stages of insects because they're cold-blooded and need a base temperature threshold to develop, similar to plants. For example, tobacco thrips are an insect commonly found on cotton in the southeast U.S., and pest management is very important to control or prevent the infestation. A popular way to determine timing of the thrips population development and when to efficiently start pest control is through growing degree days. Thrips have a base temperature of 10.5 degrees Celsius and cotton has a base temperature of 17 degrees Celsius. Both cotton and thrips development depends on temperature and soil moisture driven by precipitation. The State Climate Office of North Carolina developed a cotton thrips risk tool in collaboration with scientists from the NC State Entomology Department for this use. You can also find a video with details about the tool and how to use it here created by the Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology at NC State University. Thanks for watching.